All right, so A7R4, I'm with Colby Brown, a Sony artist who actually got to use it for what, how long? About 12 days in Alaska. 12 days in Alaska, we're looking at some photos here. Now tell me, what was your first takeaway using the camera? What were your first impressions? Well, I think the biggest thing that I learned early on was that the camera is kind of a bit of both a evolutionary, you know, kind of jump and revolutionary in certain aspects once you dive into the details. You know, little things like the hand grips, the new ergonomics mm -hmm. really make the camera feel better in your hand. Buttons are more tactile, larger, um, especially for myself who has big hands. It kind of makes a big difference, which is a common complaint. Quite for, large. Oh, for, yeah. Oh, those are massive. Okay, yeah. Common complaint for mirrorless cameras, right? They're, they're too they're small. They're small, yeah. To me, the biggest thing was more so when you started combining the increase of 18 megapixels to 61 megapixels, you get IBIS, it's been designed specifically for these high resolution sensors, autofocus, you know, coming com, coming aspects of it from the A9, and you know, you, you just have this, this high amount of detail that you just couldn't get in a camera before, especially for a full frame, let alone mirrorless. So I should mention that you are particularly a landscape wildlife travel photographer. Correct, yeah, I shoot a wide variety of things, but it's pretty much everything outside of a studio. I work in remote places around the world, and I, I prefer to be outdoors. The interesting thing for me about this camera is that, yes, you're getting 15 stops of dynamic range, which is great for landscape photographers, which we had close to that with the A7R3, but because you can now use this camera, with wildlife and other things with the improved autofocus and the 60 megapixels, you now have, or I have, increased dynamic range to use in those situations, whereas like the A9 or the A7 III always offered slightly less dynamic range than the A7 R3. Mm -hmm. So it's again combining best of both worlds where I'm getting the benefits of dynamic range in situations with camera bodies I previously didn't get because of the limitations of previous generations. So I think one of the things that stood out to me that I wrote down, I was like, oh, this would be perfect for wildlife, is the, the image quality, but also matched with the speed. You know, yeah. again, with the A7R3, when I would use it for wildlife in the past, I would mostly focus on animals that weren't moving so fast, just because it was a little bit inconsistent once you had fast moving subjects. And I usually reach for my A9, or A7 III if I needed a backup or didn't have the A9 in close proximity. But with this camera, it's kind of changed the game a bit. So I'm able to photograph bald eagles at full speed flying towards me and getting every single frame in focus as it's coming at me, which is the most challenging aspect of any wildlife you know, situation, or really any situation where you get a fast moving subject coming directly at you. And this camera can do that with 60 megapixels, which is a bit ridiculous. The other thing that they mentioned too was now you now have IAF for not just humans, but animals. So I'm wondering what animals were you using your IAF on? So IAF for animals, you know, typically Sony says that, you know, cats and dogs are what it's mainly for right now. That being said, I went out and I was spending most of my time out there photographing Alaska coastal brown bears, as well as birds uh, like uh, bald eagles, both mature and juvenile. In my experiences, the bears actually did very well. I'd say probably about 85% of the time it was able to find the eyes and track it and stay with it. Uh, every once in a while you still get a little bit of a, a glitch because the AI is kind of improving there. Birds are a little bit of a different situation. The birds' faces, there's so much, you know, diversity. Um, and so I think that's just going to take time as the AI improves across the board with all the different new models that have AI for wildlife. They must have a um, zoologist on staff <laughs> making sure that they get all their, their, uh, their genres of families Absolutely. across all animal kingdoms. <laughs> I took bio in high school. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the resolution here. 61 megapixels. Uh, how do you, is that important to you for sharpness or is that more important for cropping? Do you crop a lot or no? It's, it depends on what I'm photographing. Yeah. Uh, but I think for myself and especially for wildlife, oftentimes we can't control how close we are to animals, at least if we're taking safety into account. You know, our, our lenses can only take us so far. And so having the ability to have a 61 megapixel full frame image, if I can fill the frame is awesome. Yeah. But more times than not, you know, it's like this situation where I'm photographing, you know, these bears playing. Oh, yeah. I'm quite a far away because I don't want to get between the mother and the two little ones. That. Don't want to be between that. And no, I don't. definitely don't want to be between the mom who was not too far away. And so being able to crop in is a pretty big deal. Yeah. And so with the A7R4, what I did is I customized one of the buttons on the back of the camera to essentially jump me into APS-C mode. Okay, I was gonna ask you about that, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so I can quickly do that on the fly and the result is a 26 megapixel image. And so what, what would happen in this particular part of Brooks Falls is that there's all these seagulls around. The seagulls are kind of the scavengers taking the, the leftovers of the, of the yeah, bears. Yeah, They're the bear everywhere. Bear, yeah. And so what was interesting is they were actually the telltale sign when the bald eagles were coming in. So what would happen is the bears are fishing doing their thing. All of a sudden I'd look up 
and all the seagulls would be like, we're out of here. And then I'd look around and I'd say, okay, where is the bald eagle coming in? Because you knew that it was coming in to steal one of the fish. That was the signal. And so that was the signal in this shot. Essentially, I saw all the seagulls take off. I look over to my right and coming up the river was the bald eagle. And so I had all the settings that were already kind of dialed in. Yep. You know, this image was shot at ISO uh, 1250. Uh, I was at almost you know 600 millimeters, which is the 200 to 600. Shot at f6.3 in one two thousandths of a second, and essentially turned it. It locked on right away, and then continued to track it as it was flying at me at full speed. It's going to change the way that I photograph. It's going to change the way that I approach certain types of genres, and it's going to open up a lot more doors. Whereas previously, as I said, I had to bring a mixture of cameras to kind of yeah. photograph different types of things. It seems to have taken the best elements of the A7R series, improved upon them based on on feedback from people like myself and you know customers out there that have been looking for certain you know iterations to improve on and then pulled the best parts of the A9 and kind of created this this mixture and made the camera much more versatile than it ever was before. Awesome. All right, Kobe Brown, my pleasure, my man. Thanks, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. You enjoy the A7R4. I can't wait to get my hands on it. This is Jake with B&H. Just keep shooting.